നമസ്കാരം ഇവിടെ വി ആർ ഗോയിങ് ടു ഡിസ്കസ് വെക്ടർ വാലിഡ് ഫംഗ്ഷൻസ് ബിഫോർ മൂവിംഗ് ടു ദ വെക്ടർ വാലിഡ് ഫംഗ്ഷൻസ് വി ഹാവ് ടു ഡിക്ലയർ സം ബേസിക് ഡെഫിനേഷൻസ് ഓക്കെ വാട്ട് ഈസ് എ വെക്ടർ വെക്ടർ ഈസ് എ ക്വാണ്ടിറ്റി ഹാവിങ് ഡയറക്ഷൻ ആസ് വെൽ ആസ് മൈൻഡ് ടു കൻ യു ഗീവ് ആൻ എക്സാമ്പിൾ ഓഫ് എ വെക്ടർ യെസ് വെലോസിറ്റി ഈസ് എൻ എക്സാമ്പിൾ ഓഫ് എ വെക്ടർ ബിക്കോസ് വെലോസിറ്റി കണ്ടെയ്ൻസ് ടു ക്വാണ്ടിറ്റീസ് വൺ ഡയറക്ഷൻ ആൻഡ് വൺ മാഗ്നിറ്റ്യൂഡ് ഓക്കെ ടെൻസർ ഈസ് ദ ജനറലൈസേഷൻ ഓഫ് വെക്ടർ ബിക്കോസ് ടെൻസർ മേ കണ്ടെയിൻ മോർ ദൻ വൺ ഡയറക്ഷൻസ് ഫോർ എക്സാമ്പിൾ യു തിങ്ക് അബൌട്ട് സ്ട്രെസ് ഹൗ ടു ഡിഫൈൻ സ്ട്രെസ് ബിക്കോസ് സ്ട്രെസ് സപ്പോസ് ദിസ് ഈസ് എ ഫോഴ്സ് and this is a surface then what is the stress of this force on the surface because force has two quantities one direction and magnitude and this stress depends the direction of the surface you got it so stress not only depends the force stress depends force and direction of the surface so to define the stress we have we have three quantities one is magnitude of the force and direction of the force and last one is direction of the stress direction of this surface okay so stress is a tensor quantity next we have to uh, we know next uh, we know that what is vector addition vector subtraction what is vector addition suppose we have a two vector like this these are two vectors is a and b and what is uh, a plus b to define a plus b first we move this vector b on this side like this then this vector is defined as a plus b you got it and similarly you can define a minus b how to define a minus b suppose this is a and this is b then first we consider minus b like this is b so this is minus b and already this is our vector a so next we consider a plus minus b that is a minus b this is our a minus b so what happened we just move this vector on this side like this okay so this is our a minus b these are the basic things okay so this is the idea of a minus b so this length is same as this length you got it so a minus b a minus b gives this the modulus of a minus b gives this distance okay okay next we are going to discuss cartesian and parametric form of a curve in two dimensional space in 2d what uh, how to represent a curve in cartesian form in cartesian form we can represent a curve in y is equal to f of x form isn't it for example we consider y is equal to x square we know that y is equal to x square is a curve like this so in cartesian form means it's a direct relationship with direct relation between y and x like y is equal to f of x we can represent the same curve in parametric form okay what is parametric form parametric form means we use another variable t okay we can represent we have to represent x and y in terms of new variable t t is moving in between some interval or t may be set of all real numbers depending on the context okay so we can represent a curve in parametric form like this x is in terms of t and y is also y is also in terms of t the new new variable this t is called parameter okay then what is the parametric form of this curve this parabola y is equal to x square it is clear that if you take x as t we choose our x as t then what about y y is x square so y is t square okay so the parametric form of this parabola is x equal to t and y is equal to t square and what about the value t okay to 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 get the complete parabola here t should vary from minus infinity to plus infinity you got it it's clear that when t equal to 0 what happened when t equal to 0 <coughs> here x equal to 0 and y is equal to 0 that means this point okay, if when t equal to 0 x equal to 0 and y is equal to 0 so this point okay similarly suppose when x when x equal to 1 when t equal to 1 if t equal to 1 what about x value 
x value is 1 and y value is also 1 that is somewhere here okay suppose t equal to some minus 2 suppose t equal to minus 2 then what happened x value is minus 2 somewhere here and what about the y value y value is 4 so the point is on this parabola again okay so totality of these points gives the same parabola okay so when t is varying from minus infinity to plus infinity this gives the same uh, parabola y is equal to x square this is the idea of parametric representation of the curve in 2d okay yes this is the uh, parametric equation of the parabola if you restrict t as t is in between minus 1 to plus 2 then we get a portion of the parabola what is the portion of what is the portion of the parabola or what is the uh, graph of this parametric form if t is varying from minus 1 to plus 2 if when t equal to minus 1 this is when x value is 1 and y value is also 1 so this is starting from somewhere here and uh, when t equal to 2 x value is 2 and y value is 4 so this is like this so this is a portion of the parabola y is equal to x square and if t if t is moving from minus 1 to plus 2 okay so this is the idea of parametric form in 2d okay this is the this is the formal definitions of parametric curves and uh, some definitions parametric equations x equal to f of t and y is equal to g of t when t is between a and a and b this interval may be infinite okay depending on the context generates a curve in 2d space that is traced in a specific direction as the parameter t increases you got it for this example what happened here when t equal to minus 1 the value of the function is here 1 1 okay if t is in increasing gradually what happened the curve is tracing like this this is the direction of the curve when t equal to 0 this point okay and after 0 when t again increasing and up to 2 okay so the graph is going like this and this is the shape of the graph so here the direction of the graph is this one this is the direction of the graph so direction of the graph is same as the increasing order of the parameter here the parameter t is increasing in this manner so the the curve is tracing like this so this is the direction of the uh, this curve okay that is idea so in 2d space that is traced in a specific direction as the parameter t increases this direction is defined as the orientation of the curve okay so this direction of curve is defined as orientation of this curve okay the curve together with its orientation is called the graph of the parametric equation okay so this this is only a curve there is no orientation if you mark this orientation then this total thing is called the graph of the parametric equation you got it so there are uh, there is a small difference first one is only a curve this is a curve of this is a this is the curve of this graph uh, curve of this parametric equation x equal to t y equal to t square and t is varying from minus 1 to plus 2 if you put this mark that is its direction then this total thing is called the graph of the parametric equation okay that's idea so we have two technical terms one is orientation other one is gra graph okay next we are going to define curves in three dimensional space so that is our main point okay so in 3d what about z is equal to fx y in 2D, we know that y is equal to f of x represent a curve. Okay, for example, y is equal to x square or y is equal to x plus 2. They are all curves in two dimensional space. So, similarly, in 3D, it is z is equal to f x y. Okay, is it a curve? For example, you consider z is equal to square root of 1 minus x square minus y square. Okay, what about this one? Yeah, it is clear that this is part of our sphere. Which sphere? This is a part of the sphere. Is it square plus x square plus y square equal to 1? Okay, when you square it, this becomes z square equal to like this. When you take x square and y square on the left side, so this becomes z square plus x square plus y square equal to 1. We know that this is a sphere, unit sphere with the center origin. But here z is equal to positive square root of this one. That means z value is always positive z value is always positive so this is exactly the upper hemisphere z is equal to square root of 1 minus x square minus y square it is a part of this sphere and but, but here z value is always positive this is a positive square root so this is the upper hemisphere okay we know that this is a surface this is not a curve 
So in general, z is equal to f x y is a surface in 3D. It is not a curve. So our aim is to find or our, our aim is to introduce the what about the form, how to represent a curve in 3D space. Okay. So how to represent curve in 3D? So to represent a curve in 3D, we use the parametric form as similar to 2D keys. So what is the parametric form? We take x equal to f of t, y is equal to g of t, and z is equal to some function of t. Here, f, g, h are some functions. Okay, function of t, and t is in between a and b. So, to represent a curve in 3D, we use the parametric form. You got it? This interval may be infinite. For example, x equal to 1 minus t, y is equal to 2t, and z equal to 3t, where t is in between 0 and 1. This represents a curve in 3D. We will see this, uh, we will see the three dimensional plot of this curve uh, later we are using a class, computer, uh, uh, using a software. So these are the definitions. The parameter equations x equal to f of t, y is equal to g of t, z equal to h of t, where t is between a and b, generates a curve in 3D space that is traced in a specific direction as the parameter t increases, as similar to our 2D case. Okay. And this direction is defined as the orientation of the curve and the curve together with its orientation is called the graph of the parameter equation. Okay, all things are same as two dimensional. Okay, this is the plot of this curve x equal to 1 minus t, y is equal to 2t, z equal to 3d. It is clear that when t equal to 0, what happened? When t equal to 0, here x value is 1. Okay, x is 1 at this point. And what about y? y is 0, z equal to 0. So, that means the point is on this point, 1, 0, 0. If t is increasing gradually, what happened? What about x? x is, x is decreasing. So, x value is going this direction. Okay. And what about y and t? y and t is increasing. So, ultimately, this is the totality of that points. What about the last point? What about this last point? Yeah, it is exactly when t equal to 1, this becomes 0. And this is 2. And this is 3. So this point is nothing. This point is 0, 2, 3. So this is a straight line. Okay. Similarly, we can plot another uh, curve x equal to cos t, y is equal to sin t, z equal to t. We suppose t is varying from minus n to plus infinity. And what happened? We know that x, x, x and y has a common property. What happened? x square plus y square is always 1 because cos square t plus sin square t is 1. That means x and y moving only on a circle, unit circle. But z value is t. So, suppose t equal to 0. If t equal to 0, what happened? When t equal to 0, this become cos 0, sin 0, z equal to 0. So, what is cos 0? Cos 0 is 1, 0 and 0. So, starting from here, x value is 1, 1, 0, 0. Okay. When t is increasing, what happened? This x and y moving along a circle. You got it. x and y moving along a circle. But it has an z value. Third compound is there. z is increasing. So what happened? This curve is moving like this. So that's why this is called circular helix. Okay. Okay. These are some examples of parameter curves in 3D. Now we are ready to define vector valued functions. Okay, in last example, we consider the circular helix. It is a set of all points of the form cos t, sin t, and t for all values of t. If, if we move t from minus into plus infinity, then you get a complete helix. Okay. Suppose we view, suppose we view each of these points as a terminal point of a vector r whose initial point is at origin. Then what happened? means like this okay so here we think about this point is a terminal point of a vector we know how to represent a vector for example for example you consider uh, 1i plus 2j plus 3k then this what about this vector this vector is nothing like this one the terminal point of this vector let it be a then what about a the end point is this point which point one to 3 that's idea okay so if you view 
each of these points as a terminal point for a vector r whose initial point is at origin then what happened then r of t can be written like this cos t i plus sin t j plus t k you got it if you if if t is varying we get different different vectors okay then we trace the end point of all these vectors we get that particular parameter particular curve that's idea So this is the vector representation of that curve x equal to cos t, y is equal to sin t and z equal to t. Okay, so in general we can define a vector valued function like this r of t equal to x of t i plus y of t j plus z of t k is called a vector valued function. Uh, next one component functions of vector valued functions. The functions x of t, y of t and z of t are called component functions of r of t okay for example the component functions of this vector valued function r of t equal to cos t i plus sin t j plus t k or x of t equal to cos t and uh, sin t and t they are the components of this function okay next we are going to define the graph of this uh, vector valued function this is same this is similar to our uh, graph of our parametric function because if r of t is a vector valued function then the graph of this vector valued function r of t is the parametric curve described by the component functions of r of t okay we know how to describe the parametric curve corresponding to a uh, tree uh, in parametric form okay so that is the idea of graph so for example, if you take our vector valued function r of t as cos t i plus sin t j plus t k and suppose we put a restriction like this 0 less than t less than 2 pi then this is the uh, graph of this vector valued function. Okay, so what about the orientation of this uh, curve? When t equal to 0, this is 1, 0, 0. So starting from this point. Okay, so this is the orientation of this curve. So this or this uh, curve together with this orientation is called graph of this vector valued function. Okay. Okay. This is the concept of vector valued function. In next uh, session, we will discuss limit and differentiability of a vector valued function. Okay. Thank you.